Chiefs Kingdom. It's time for All Chiefed Up with your hosts, Steve and Mike Williams. From the bluegrass to the Red Sea, this is the Kingdom's Podcast. Chiefs Kingdom, it is Monday morning. We just had one of the best drafts in the history of drafts, I think. Maybe. Maybe. What do you think, Steve? What do you think? Maybe the best draft in history of beach drafts? Oh, got maybe. Last year was tough, but we're going to talk about it today. So uh, I'm your host, Mike Williams. My other host is somewhere here, Steve Williams. What's going on, Steve? Uh, same old stuff. Uh, draft weekend is over, winding down. Uh, kind of drafted out, so I'm glad it's over and we know what happened. So uh, now I'm just excited to see where, where it goes from here. Yeah, so I think today we're going to do a complete um, seven-round draft breakdown. We're going to tell you what we think of the pick. We're going to grade them. We're going to say where Beach could possibly get better. Maybe he can't get better anywhere. Maybe he was perfect. We don't know. According to some, he's been completely perfect, but we might have a few surprises that we think could have made it better. But uh, let's just go ahead and jump right in. You can um, follow along with us right now. The article is live on allchiefsup.com. We have our draft grades going on. And um, I'll kick it to Steve, and I'll let you start off with our first round one picks and give you your grades. Let's go. All right. Round one pick 21. Uh, we got it from the Patriots for the 29th uh, pick, the 94th pick, and the 121st pick. So. Uh, Veach traded up here and grabbed Trent McDuffie, cornerback from Washington. I gave uh, Veach an A on the Trent McDuffie pick. Uh, the reason that I, I did that was I initially uh, wasn't happy that we moved up to take a corner. Uh, I didn't think that we needed to take a corner early in the draft. So I was a little irritated about that. But, I mean, you can't fault a guy for making a move and getting a top 10 talent at pick 21. And McDuffie, he, he could very well be the best corner uh, out of this class when all is said and done. So I think that it was a good move by Veach. And we, we, we had a lot of holes on defense that needed to be filled. So I went ahead and I gave him a, a, a solid A for that pick. What about you, Mike? Okay, yeah. Um, I also graded it an A. I remember when we took the pick, again, we've discussed this. I kind of looked at you and I was like, hey, this could be Trent McDuffie. It might not be Jermaine Johnson. And it was, um, I was reading some stuff earlier before the draft that we were interested in McDuffie. I didn't know to what extent, but so yeah, Veach made the pick, um, again, did he give up a little too much to come up? Maybe, I think maybe new England was playing hardball a little bit. Maybe, you know, Veach just had to do it. So I think in the end, me and Steve have discussed, and we think it was probably about fair what he give up I think and, so. um, yeah, I agree. I had him rated as my number two corner on my big board. He was the number ninth rated player overall out of the entire draft class. And Veach turned a 29 pick into a 21 overall pick and got the number nine best player on my board. So I mean, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I think it was good uh, value is because it really didn't hinder the rest of the picks that we had. There were talent, like very, very talented guys at every selection that we had. Like people were, were on the board that we could use. So it wasn't like we lost anything by, by getting rid of those two picks. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I give it an A. I think it's fair. I think it would have been a plus, an A plus, if maybe Veach wouldn't have had to give up as much as he did. But at the same time, I think in the long run, we're going to be fine with what he give up because McDuffie, I think, is going to develop into a very good starting corner, if not elite starting corner before it's all said and done. For sure. So, okay, so we both give it an A, and let's move on to round one, pick number 30. We took George Karloftis, defensive end out of Purdue, 6'4", 266 pounds. This guy is a monster. So, Steve, what did you grade the Chiefs for that pick? I absolutely love the pick of George Karloftis. Uh, I gave it an A+. Plus. Uh, reason being is everybody knows we needed an edge rusher coming into the draft, so uh on my big board I actually had George Karloftis as the fourth rated edge rusher but like I said in my article I always felt like he might be the safest pick of all of the edge rushers in this draft so yeah, there's a little bit of question marks around uh Thibodeau and you know 
his motives. And then also with uh, Hutchinson, uh, is he really worth that number one pick? Uh, obviously, the Jags didn't think so. And then, of course, you got Trayvon Walker, who, I mean, really, he's just, it's hard to tell what he's going to do. He's got all the potential and everything, got a lot of upside. But in that uh, Georgia defense and that scheme, I mean, really, we don't see any straight tape of him edge rushing like a whole lot. He, he always kind of held his ground and, and stuffed some runs and things like that. So I thought Carl Loftus was a safe pick here. I mean, he's a high character guy. He's got a cool backstory, uh, good work ethic. Uh, I always comped him to J.J. Watt. I did that a long time ago. And a lot of people thought I was crazy for saying that and putting them in the same sentence. But now, uh, post draft, that seems to be the popular thing for everybody to do is comp Carl off just to JJ Watt. So all you guys can suck it now. And then um, I'm going to say uh, if he gets some more strength. So if you look at like the combine numbers from JJ Watt and Carl Loftus, like everything was exactly the same except for the bench. I feel like. Karloftis has a little bit left to be desired on the strength thing, even though he is like a power rusher, I still think he could be even better. So I think his ceiling's a lot higher than a lot of people think it is. And I think if he gets in that weight room, uh, you know, he's in an NFL weight room now, uh, working with guys that know what to do. And I think he could, he's going to bulk up and get a lot stronger. And I think he could be definitely uh, in a JJ Watt conversation one day. So a plus for that pick. Yeah, I got it. Uh, I gave it also an A+. Plus. I think that Carl Loftus is, like you said, I think he's the safest edge in the draft, to be honest. He may not be the most flashy. He may not be the quickest. He may not be the fastest. He may not be the strongest. I don't even know that. But I do think he gives the most consistent effort. I believe his floor is the highest floor. And I believe, honestly, his ceiling is – um so far up we can't even comprehend how good this guy could get because he does have he's got the mental fortitude and he's got just all the intangibles it takes to want to get better and to just be a a pro like i think now that he can focus on just playing football and and dropping everything like going to class doing all that stuff and just focus on the weight room focus on the playbook i think george Karloftis sky's the limit for him like for sure and uh yeah, so when you look back at the edge rushers, you had Trayvon Walker go one. Well, his production didn't match. He's nothing but a workout warrior. Uh, you had um, – who was the other one? We had Kayvon Thibodeau. There was character questions. There was, does he give enough effort? We had Jermaine Johnson. This guy, most of his sacks came four and five seconds after the play. So even though he was a uh, good speed, good get off, he didn't e- exactly, like, make plays happen. It was like – coverage sacks almost I like the coverage had, uh, was forcing him out of the pocket i had carl loftus above jermaine johnson to begin with the only other one that i had above carl loftus was uh hutchinson and of yeah, course so who knows what's going to go on there i think he's got a lot of potential but i mean we'll yeah see. so so we've talked about hutchinson too i mean he's not as good as the bosa brothers he's just not i'm sorry he's not um he does work hard i mean he he's a hard worker but He's also got that, like, I really do believe his ceiling is lower than Karloftis in a way. And right. Yeah. So, I mean, I preferred Karloftis over all of them. Me let's too. To be honest. Me too. So, I'm actually, very happy with that pick. I, I really thought that Karloftis would be gone by pick 30, but he wasn't. And I was ecstatic. So, I'm glad that they went ahead and went with that too, because that's exactly what we would have done in that situation. Yeah. But like and I you think said, it's, I think it's funny that like in the first round we went corner and edge and he actually got my favorite corner and my favorite edge, which is pretty That's rare because cool. usually yeah. that don't happen. Good job, Brett Veach. Yeah, good job. All right. Yeah. But like you said, the sky is the limit for George Karloftis. And speaking of sky on to our next pick, oh, it was I like round it. two, pick 54, Sky Moore, wide receiver from Western Michigan. How do you feel about that pick, Mike? I like the fit. I think Sky Moore will fit in seamlessly with what we do. I thought it was kind of crazy that he was on the board at 50 and Pickens was there and all of Chiefs Kingdom's favorites and Brett Veach trades down. And like we said, we felt like everybody's head exploded like at the same time. But, uh, you know, he took a chance. Sky Moore, I think, was the pick over, you know, if he'd have said at 50, he was taking more over Pickens there anyway. Yeah, I believe Um, so. Brett Veach took a big gamble to come down four spots because 
uh, Pickens actually had went in those four spots, and it's very possible maybe the Colts could have slid in before us again and took uh, Sky Moore or something. So he actually – he gambled, but it paid off because he picked up a fifth round pick. And as you'll see later, we turned that fifth round pick into a monster. So right. when you get to the pick of just Sky Moore, I give it an A plus. I think the value of at 54, that's insane. We had mocked him in the first round, you know, without even was he a first round grade on my board? No, he was more of a high second. And I think he was rated like my 35th, 38th, somewhere in there, best player. But to get him at number 54, and the thing about him, he had the biggest hands of any wide receiver. If you watch his film, you will watch it for days before you'll find him dropping a ball. And he knows how to – he he's got a good release off the line. I think he only dropped three passes, and they he had like 125-plus targets this year. It's just insane how good he is. And I think even though he is a little shorter at 5'9", I think is what he is, but, I mean – it's not ideal. We've talked about how we wanted to kind of get a little size, but I mean, I think they did that with MVS. I think they've done that with Juju and I think he's going to kind of compliment, you know, if they can find a way to do it, he's going to kind of compliment, you know, our offense in a way that um, I think how Miko probably should have been done from the beginning. I think Miko's finally finding his uh, niche in the offense, but I think they will be uh, smart enough to get, Sky Moore incorporated a little more seamlessly right off the bat. What do you think? I also gave the pick an A plus. I think that Sky Moore, like you were saying, uh, I think he'll come into this offense pretty seamlessly. To be honest, I don't think it'll be as as like it was with McColl, where they were trying to find his spot. I don't. I don't know if you'll have that much of a hiccup there because I feel like coming straight out of the draft. Uh, to his rookie year, I feel like he actually has a one up on McColl as far as just being an all around better receiver. Like uh, McColl just had the speed and everything, but he was kind of like a project. And we were all wondering why they traded up to get him anyway. But uh, I don't think Scott Moore is going to have that problem. Scott Moore's uh, a great route runner. He's got a big route tree, uh, small spaces. He is super quick, like probably, you know, quicker than any other receiver in the draft to be honest and uh just got that short burst and everything he's also super reliable like you know scott moore is going to run the right route and you know he's going to catch the ball when it's thrown to him and that's something that mahomes can really use because we dealt with a lot of drops last year and i think you know sometimes those are just you know confidence killers and 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 drive stoppers and uh hopefully scott moore is going to have those reliable hands that you know he's going to catch the ball so that's that's good to have but uh like mike alluded to and I alluded to in my article, um, the fact that he was, uh, Beach was able to trade back uh, and still get Sky Moore, that was impressive uh, for one reason. Like, obviously, I had George Pickens above Sky Moore on my big board of receivers. So, in that position, the next receiver to fall, it, according to me, should have been George Pickens. And I would love to have seen George Pickens in Kansas City. But, you know, that boat sailed. We got Sky Moore, and I'm, I'm excited about it. And the fact that Veach was able to trade back, still get Sky Moore, which is who I think he wanted anyway. Um, we got that fifth-round pick and absolutely killed it in the fifth round. So, I mean, that was just some uh, Brett Veach magic right there, in my opinion. So, A-plus all the way. Yeah, I totally agree. So, let's move on. We got pick number 62 in round two. Uh, this one we didn't trade. We sit still, and we took a safety out of Cincinnati, Brian Cook. Um, Brian Cook doesn't have a lot of film. Like, he's only started one full year at this elite level in Cincinnati, which, I mean, that defense looked pretty good. So, not a lot of film. He got invited to the combine. He had a shoulder injury. He didn't get to really do anything, didn't get to create a lot of buzz. But uh, with that being said, what did you grade it, Steve? Uh, this is where it fell a little bit for me. I gave the pick a B minus. Um, so when the Chiefs took Brian Cook, uh, I was livid. Like, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the reason that I was pretty irritated was because, uh, once again, just the way I felt in the first round was maybe we didn't need to take a corner in the first round. I really didn't feel the need to take a safety in the second. Uh, and then, let's, you know, with that, we took the safety – I thought Nick Cross was a better safety than Brian Cook. So I thought if we were going to take a safety uh, right there, it should have been him. 
but more so on top of that, I really felt like this is where Veach uh, slightly dropped the ball in this draft because things could have fell a lot differently. It was a big reach to me to take Brian Cook there. I think that we could have got him with pick 103, uh, but we went ahead and took him at 62. So to me, uh, you kind of made yourself miss out on uh, some more top-tier talent because you got too antsy with the Brian Cook thing. Um, so yeah, that's that's where I was at with it. Uh, in hindsight, uh, I've, I'm not going to change my opinion on that, but I have watched a lot more Brian Cook tape. I do love the way he plays. Uh, he's a head hunter. He's going to hit you. Uh, he's going to put the fear of God into receivers out there. So, I mean, I like that style of play and I'm glad to see the chief's defense kind of moving towards that, you know, smash mouth direction. I'm totally cool with that. But like I said, I thought it was a pretty big reach and I think I was being generous when I gave it a B minus grade. What about you? Yeah, I also gave it a B minus, but for a little few different reasons than Steve, um, obviously Veach had a theme to this draft. We've already discussed this. I think he wanted to beef up the defense. I think he definitely wanted to go after, um, guys that just hit you guys that were enforcers on the field that didn't shy away from contact and they got it with Brian cook. If that's one thing you can say watching his film for five minutes is that if you're in his area, he's going to light you up. That's the thing with that Brian cook brings. Um, he kind of, we had talked about this a little earlier. He kind of. I don't, he's, he's in that like vibe of like, hopefully a Bernard Pollard and a Greg Wesley kind of vibe. Like the guy that if you come in his area, he's going to hit you and it's going to hurt. And you may not even be able to walk off the field under your own power. That's the kind of like thing I think he brings. But at the same time, I feel like, yes, 62 seemed a little early, but obviously we were valuing defensive backs in this draft. And um, so it's a little early maybe I thought Veach could have kind of pulled the same thing he did with Sky Moore. If he wasn't scared to fall back four picks to get Sky Moore, who was probably his top five, you know, wide receivers he had on his board, I would think. Um, why was he scared to pull back five, 10 picks to get another fourth, another fifth, like he used um, and, and maybe get Brian cook there. And then that makes you wonder, maybe he didn't get offered. Who knows? Um, but they really valued him. So, I mean, I can't really knock them too much. I mean, if that was who they liked on their board, that's who they liked. And, I mean, we've said it from the beginning. It's hard to question Brett Veach and company because they've hit on such, like so many of these guys. And uh, I do believe in three to four years, I say this in the article, that within three to four years, we will know what he is as a player is he going to be more than just the hit guy is he going to be somebody that can cover is he a guy that's going to be like a solid starter but i do think barring injury because that's what killed Juan thornhill in my opinion i right. do believe within three to four years he will have been a better pick than Juan thornhill so that's where i'll sit on that one i'll give it a b minus and we'll stop harping on brian cook for a minute and we'll move on to the last pick on day two it was round three, pick number 39, and we took probably my favorite pick out of everybody just because I like him. We took Death Row himself, Leo Chanel from Wisconsin, and, I mean, that was a banger of a pick, dude. What did you rate it, Steve? Oh, hands down, A-plus pick for Leo Chanel there. I think that – A-plus. That is arguably the best pick of any team on day two if you count in value, you know, getting him there because – uh, a lot of people had Leo Chanel as one of the top linebackers, if not the top linebacker on their big board. So uh, I actually thought he would go somewhere towards uh, probably late second round. And we ended up getting him at pick 39 in round three. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. It was yeah. So <clears throat> he just, he's the guy that along with cook, you can tell that they're making a shift on that defense. They want to see, more uh smack you in the mouth hit you and make you scared to you know go over the middle and things like that like they're they're trying to shift uh that mentality on that defense and those two guys are perfect leo chanel couldn't be a better person for that i mean he plays 100 miles an hour all the time uh high motor and he's always playing hard and he collapses in on the ball uh fast uh he's very downhill player he makes the run game very difficult for the opposite team. And uh, 
I just I just love that pick. I think it's great value, and and he's a character too, man. And I I like that. I like I like his mentality. Yeah, I agree. I also rated it an A plus. I think for the value, again, we keep preaching value, value, and that's all you can do in the NFL draft is you try to find value at where you're picking. And for us to get him literally like one of the last few picks in the third round was a complete steal. As we said, we've had a, a first round grade almost on Leo Chanel and at worst a second round grade. And here this guy falls to the end of the third and we're like, why is he still on the board? And, you know, Leo Chanel, if you come to read the article and all chiefed up, you'll see exactly what we say about him. But the word I used to describe Leo Chanel was violent. And when yeah. he hits you, you feel it. And that's a theme. Again, it's a theme. That's exactly what we did with Brian Cook. You're going to feel it. Like you can feel it watching the YouTube videos of Brian Cook. When he hits you, you feel it. And uh, you do the same with Leo Chanel. Like he also allows Willie to be able to go back and play his natural weak position. Yes. And he's gonna he's gonna play the Sam. Yes. And he's also a good, he's a good backup in case something happens with Bolton and Bolton misses some time. He can slide to the middle seamlessly and not be much of a downgrade, if any. Right. I That's think, another reason why I really love this pick is because Brett Veach played that perfectly because he's going to come in at the Sam. Willie's going to get to play more on the weak side. And I, I just think it's a great fit uh, as well as a great value and a great pick all together. Uh, I actually said on the website, from here on out, our linebacker linebackers will now only be referred to as death row. So say it all chiefed up. So yeah. that whole death group, row. that's death it's, row right there in the middle it's of the death field. row. If you can make it through death row, then guess what? You've got, <laughs> you got Justin Reed and you've got another monster Brian cook waiting for you. So thanks for tuning in. You've been listening to all chiefed up. Be sure to subscribe and follow on all social media at all chiefed up.